Only last week, I was asked the question about plug-top fuses. If it says 13 amps on the fuse, then why does it not fuse at 13 amps? Which is true. So, in this video from Learn Electrics, we'll look at this, explain the reasons for this, and other questions like, why does a 13 amp plug, or plug top as we call them, overheat? And, can a 13 amp fuse really carry 20 amps? We'll also look at the fusing characteristics of a BS1362 fuse and how the fusing tables work. Perhaps things will be a lot clearer. If we can understand the fusing curves of a BS1362 plug top fuse, as in this video, then we will also understand how the fusing tables work for other fuse types. Each fuse type will have its own unique requirements, how much current, how much time, etc., as defined by the relevant design standards for that fuse. This is a fusing curve for a BS1362 plug top fuse and will serve as well to demonstrate why things happen as they do. Graphs for other fuse types will be similar but not quite the same. Along the bottom is the amps scale. How many amps are flowing through the fuse, either in normal use or when there's a fault. The left hand side of the graph shows the time that it takes for the fuse to trip or blow with that amount of current flowing. We can trace a line up the graph from the amps line and where it meets the fusing curves shown here in blue and purple, we can read across to the left hand side and find the seconds taken to operate or blow. The first thing to notice is that the numbers follow a logarithmic scale. They look awkward at first but let me explain. If we consider the time taken for the fuse to blow, look at the green box. This part of the graph covers the time taken to blow from 1 second to 10 seconds. It has a span of just 10 seconds. 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, etc. in 1 second increments. Now the pink section. Exactly the same size on the graph, but this covers from 10 seconds to 100 seconds, 10 times the span of the green box. It's marked in jumps of 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30, 40, and so on. Moving to the blue box, this is from 100 seconds to 1000 seconds. So 100, 200, 300, 400, and so on. What does this mean for time? The lines at the very bottom are graduated in 0 0.01 seconds, or one hundredths of a second, then in tenths of a second, in 0 0.1 steps, then to seconds, now tens of seconds, and then to the blue box showing hundreds of seconds. 100 seconds is just over one and a half minutes, and 10,000 seconds is about two and three quarter hours. Likewise, the amps along the bottom use a similar logarithmic scale. 1, 2, 3, 4 to 10, then 10, 20, 30, up to 100, and so on. Now take a look at the two fusing curves, the blue and purple lines. By finding the current flowing through the fuse along the bottom, we can, from the curves, determine two important numbers. The purple line tells us that the fuse must operate, must blow, at or before this time, the latest time. The blue line tells us that the fuse must not blow before the time indicated, the earliest time. As an example, we can use a current of 50 amps. A 50 amps, a 13 amp BS1362 fuse should not blow in less than 0 0.1 seconds shown by the point where the bottom of the red dotted line touches the blue curve. But it must blow at or before 20 seconds as shown by the point at which the top of the dotted line meets the purple curve. At 100 amps of current 
the red dotted line that is joining the blue and purple curves moves to the right, as this is a higher current. It also moves down the graph, indicating that a quicker fusing time is required by the standards. At 100 amps, a 13 amp BS1362 fuse should operate between 0.01 seconds and 0.3 seconds. What if we go the other way? What if the current was reduced to, say, just 30 amps? Where does the red line move to now? It's a lower current than 100 amps, so it moves to the left. But by moving to the left, it follows the curve up the page, up the graph, indicating a slower response time. At 30 amps, a 13 amp BS1362 fuse should operate between about 1.5 seconds and 450 seconds, or 7.5 minutes. And this is how we use the fusing curves to give us the times between which the fuses will operate or blow, and all fuse manufacturers must work to the same standard. Bigger amps, less time to blow. Smaller amps and more time allowed. Now that we know about fusing times, we can look at why a plug becomes hot and sometimes begins to burn and break down, perhaps occasionally to catch fire. To begin, we need to look at the fuse, what's inside it, the markings on it and how it works, and then discover why it overheats. A plug top fuse in the UK should conform to the relevant British standard, which is BS1362. The fuse rating will be printed on the body, 13 amps in this case, and this is known as IN, the nominal fuse rating. Inside the fuse body is a fusible wire that is attached to the two metal end caps. The fusible wire is designed to melt when it gets too hot, and the manufacturer will blend the various metals that make up the fusible wire to achieve the standard. At 13 amps of current, about 1 watt of heat energy is produced inside the fuse. And this is not enough to melt the fuse wire, and so a 13 amp fuse will allow 13 amps of current to flow. Remember that the fuse will be totally enclosed inside the plug top, and that this will make it difficult for any build-up of heat, any excess, to escape from the fuse and plug top. At 13 amps, the amount of heat escaping is just enough to maintain equilibrium. Think of the fuse at 13 amps of current as acting like a 1 watt heater, and the plug top can just about lose this 1 watt of heat under ideal circumstances. Above 13 amps, and the heat generation quickly exceeds heat loss, and the plug top will begin to heat up and suffer heat damage. There is more heat being generated inside the plug than can be lost into the air and surroundings. The fuse is acting as a heater element, making its surroundings hot, but it still might not be hot enough to cause the fuse wire to melt. The British standard will quote certain numbers for the design and manufacture of the fuse. But where do the numbers come from? What do they mean? IN is the nominal current rating of the fuse, 13 amps in this example. Think of the word nominal as meaning the name or number that is printed on the body of the fuse. Nominal, name, 13 amps. INF is the non-fusing current, the constant current that will not cause the fuse to melt for at least 30 minutes. And INF is specified as 1.6 times the value of IN, and, as we said, it must hold this for 30 minutes. So, for our 13 amp fuse, the non-fusing current is 1.6 times the nominal current, which means we have 1.6 times 13 amps, which gives us 20.8 amps. We can say that a 13 amp BS1362 plug top fuse will pass 20.8 amps without fusing 
for at least 30 minutes. Surprised? There is more to come. IF is the fusing current, the current that it will fuse at. A BS1362 13 amp fuse must blow within 30 minutes if the current exceeds 1.9 times the nominal current or IN. So we have IF, the fusing current, equal to 1.9 times the nominal current of the fuse. IF is 1.9 times 13 amps, which gives us a value for fusing current of 24.7 amps. If a constant 24.7 amps flows through the fuse, then it must operate, must blow, within 30 minutes. Let's just review that. For a BS1362 13 amp plug top fuse, INF is the non-fusing current, and if the current is 20.8 amps, the fuse should not blow for at least 30 minutes. IF is the fusing current. If the current is 24.7 amps, the fuse must blow within 30 minutes. This means that a BS1362 13 amp fuse carrying 20 amps could potentially never trip. How many times have we seen four socket extension leads protected by a 13 amp fuse and very obviously overloaded? Or extension leads in extension leads? For the customer, if the fuse doesn't blow, then everything must be all right, which we now know is not the case. Here's the fusing response graph from before. At 20.8 amps along the bottom, we can now project the red dotted line up to where it crosses the blue line, the earliest response time. It must not blow before this period of time. This is INF, the non-fusing current, and we can see that they meet at 1,800 seconds, or 30 minutes, exactly where the standard says it should be. Now look at IF, the fusing current, and the purple line. Follow the red line up from 24.7 amps and it meets the line at 1,800 seconds, or 30 minutes again. The British standard says that the fuse must blow at or before this line. And at 20 amps, what happens there? Our 13 amp fuse is a never blow fuse. Let's look. The red dotted line shows 20 amps of current flowing in the fuse. At 20 amps, the red line never quite reaches the blue line. It's possible then that at 20 amps of current, a 13 amp fuse may never actually fuse or blow. It cannot reach the blue line. The fuse will continue to act as a heater, outputting heat that cannot be easily or safely dissipated. The heat builds up and gradually destroys the plug or socket to which it is attached. Wires can begin to melt, and it's possible, in extreme circumstances, that any flammable materials may ignite. A 13 amp fuse will not fuse or blow at 13 amps. It's designed to pass 13 amps continuously. Most fuses will allow for small overloads of current above their nominal value, but these should be of short duration. In an ideal world, non-existent. Although a 13 amp fuse can pass 20 amps without fusing, this should not set a precedent to always overload a fuse, as this causes heat generation within the fuse that can then overheat and damage the plug top itself. The fuse should always match the maximum loads expected and the cable sizes should be chosen to carry those loads safely. Always remove the cardboard cutting guide from new plugs and do not cover the plug itself. This may limit the heat that can be lost from the plug and may provide flammable materials that may ignite. Plug tops and socket outlets should be checked frequently, for example during pack testing, for signs of thermal damage and appropriate remedial actions taken if needed. Thank you for watching. 
It really is appreciated. And I hope that you found the video useful and informative. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos. And remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget, you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.